Hello, my name is Crystal and this is... Hello, my name is Emily. And today we're going to be showing you how to do um, a protocol for lower extremity venous. The reason for this protocol is to check for deep vein thrombosis. So during this exam, we are going to make sure the patient doesn't have a DVT, which is a deep vein thrombosis. It's a medical condition that occurs when a blood clot forms in the deep vein. These clots usually develop in the lower leg, thigh, or pelvis, but they can also occur in the arm. There are two types of a DVT. One is an acute DVT, which includes anechoic or hypoechoic thrombus and lack of venous compressibility. A chronic DVT is characterized by the presence of echogenic thrombus within the vessel's lumen with a partial compressibility. Some reasons a lower extremity venous ultrasound would be ordered would be for leg swelling, leg pain, leg discoloration, dyspnea, or tachypnea. Those are the most common indications to do a lower extremity venous ultrasound along with pulmonary embolism and also pulmonary embolism in pregnant women. We do not want a blood clot to go to the heart or the lungs because that can be very lethal to a patient. When you're scanning lower extremity venous, what you want to do in the beginning is compress all the way down to make sure there is no clots present. Once you do this, then it's, you have the okay to go ahead and do augmentations throughout the leg on the veins. Because if you, do, if you do augmentations without compressing all the way down, you can dislodge a blood clot, which is not good. So now I'll be showing the required images for this study, along with some landmarks to help orientate yourself and to be able to differentiate the difference between veins and arteries. I really like this image because it shows where the vessels lie in comparison to each other and it can help you feel better about where you are um, when you orientate your, yourself. So we start off with the GSV and the reason why it looks like the GSV is coursing up is because it's actually going out. Then you go to this uh, common femoral vein, then down to the deep femoral and then femoral vein prox mid and distal, all the way down to the popliteal. Then you get the PTV and the perineal vein. The arrow is pointing to the greater saphenous vein or the GSV for short. The GSV is coursing upward on the screen. So you know that what is the GSV. And of course, like all veins, it is gonna be compressible if there's no clot present. The GSV is going to be around the groin area. Of course, for all for all patients, it can vary, but as long as you're in the groin area, you're looking for a GSV that's compressible, and it's also coursing up when you're looking at the screen. You know that is the GSV. This is what the color for the GSV looks like. You need to make sure that the angle and the angle of the vessel are going in the same direction. Also make sure the settings for the scale is set to an appropriate setting. That way you can get color filled in all the way. This is what the pulse wave is going to look like. For veins, you don't need um, an angle and pulse wave. Just make sure the color box has the correct angle, but the pulse wave is okay. For the GSV, you're not going to need to compress. Just let the waveform go all the way to the end. After the GSV, it's the common femoral vein. Once you get the GSV, you can slightly angle down once the GSV is no longer in sight, and that would be your common femoral vein. It's also in the growing area. This is what the color should look like for the common femoral vein. This is the common femoral vein waveform with augmentations noted. Next, we're going to go to the deep femoral vein. To find that, that one, we're going to find the common femoral vein and follow it down until it bifurcates. Since it is a deep femoral, we're going to find the posterior vessel, and that would be the deep femoral vein. 
When you're getting the color for the deep femoral vein, you also want to show color for the femoral vein prox so you can be sure that it is the deep femoral and not the prox. This image is showing the waveform for the deep femoral vein and also the augmentation. For the femoral vein prox, you're going to be looking on the same area as the deep femoral vein. The only difference is you're going to be getting the vessel that is anterior. This is the color for the femoral vein prox. Again, you're going to want to show the femoral vein prox and the deep femoral vein. Augmentation for the femoral vein prox. And going further down the leg, you're going to hit femoral vein mid. This image is showing the femoral vein mid, the artery, which is in red and the, ve the vein, which is in blue. And the augmentation for the femoral vein mid. So after mid comes distal. And again, like in the previous images, you're gonna wanna have dual screen and show one without compression and one with compression. This image is showing both artery and vein. And again, you're gonna do the augmentation for the femoral vein distal. After the femoral vein distal, we go to behind the knee and get the popliteal vein. Most popliteal veins come with, or most popliteal vessels, sorry, come with one artery and one vein. But we found that our patient that we were scanning had a variant where she had two veins and one vessel. This variant is considered normal. Here's the color and also the augmentation and the waveform for the popliteal vein. Sometimes it's hard to do the augmentation because you need to have your arm anchored down. That way you don't move when you're trying to press the buttons, I guess, on the machine or to augment. So you need to have the steady hand, make sure it's anchored and little to no movement at all. Here I was able to get the PTV and also the perineal vein in one image. For some cases, almost most cases, it's not as easy to get them together. Sometimes you would have to get them um, in different images. This image is showing both the artery and the two veins for the PTV. But for the PTV and also the perineal, it can be difficult to get the color and pulse wave because they are such little veins. On the ne these next three images, I focused more on the perineal veins. Um, I got the compression, which was in dual screen, the color, and also the pulse wave with the augmentation for the perineal veins. The next thing that you do want to document when you're doing a lower extremity venous is the lymph nodes. You're going to find a bunch of lymph nodes in the growing area. You're going to see some really little ones and also some really big obvious ones. You're definitely going to want to take an image of those also in dual screen one in SAG and one in transverse, get an image in color, and also throw a measurement on them. These next images are gonna go by quicker because they're the, pretty much the same thing, except it's for the left leg. Now for the left. The left can be more difficult to examine, to scan, because of course we're on the other side. We're closer to the right leg than we are to the left. So to augment, it's quite a challenge. Um, you could either position yourself somewhere closer, so go on the other side, or ask somebody to help you. But either way, everything's going to stay exactly the same. You still need dual screen, you still need color, and you still need the waveform with augmentations. Remember, this study is to look for any blood clots that may be happening in the patient's leg. We don't want those blood clots to dislodge while we do the augmentations. So before we do any of that, we need to make sure that we're compressing from the common femoral vein all the way down to the femoral vein distal. Once we get to the, to the popliteal vein, which is behind the knee, you're also gonna do compressions there. And just to, again, double check, make sure that there's no clots that can dislodge. Once you're done with the exam, you would then write your report. Our report says that there's no signs of DVT, 
and also that there, there is compressions and color flow for all of the vessels on the leg. So now that we've gone through all of the images of what a lower extremity venous study entails, I'm going to be showing a video of what it actually looks like. So the video is going to be um, sped up a bit. That way we're not here waiting, just watching a whole protocol um, because the protocol can take up to, well, mostly 15 minutes per leg. So that's 30 minutes a whole if it's bilateral. But the time can go on past 15 minutes a leg if depending on the patient's body habitus, if the patient hasn't been drinking water. So there's a lot of um, factors on telling whether or not the patient is going to be a good scan, if it's going to be quick and easy, or if it's going to give you a little bit more of a difficult time. So here's a video of what it should look like. As you can see in the video, I was struggling a bit to get her PTV and perineal. The augmentation is tricky because you can't move at all or you will move off of the vessel and you'll just lose it and won't get any waveform. Um, and this was a fairly um, healthy patient. She does a lot of running. She drinks plenty of water. So her veins are pretty good and it was still kind of difficult on this patient. When that happens, just remember to stay calm and keep going and remember what you learned in school. When you're doing an LEV protocol, you have to remember that not all patients are gonna be easy scans. There's gonna be patients where you cannot get color flow, you can't get a pulse wave, you can't move your arm across maybe their leg because of their body habitus to get an augmentation. When that happens, you have to keep calm and remember 
the basics. And if you need, just ask for help. It's okay to ask for help. Also, um, you have to show or rem remember to be confident in what you're doing and don't scare the patient and don't get overwhelmed. You need to just be confident in everything that you do. And that concludes our video on lower extremity venous. Thank you guys so much for watching and we really hope you enjoyed. And also don't forget, sonographers do it in the dark.